and welcome to Two Tired Teachers. Today I want to be talking about how to hitch a travel trailer using the Blue Ox. Here we go, using the Blue Ox hitch. And for me, the first step is always lining the tow vehicle with the trailer. And what I do whenever I line up to back up, I'm always just checking my mirrors. And I did this even when we had the truck where I had a rear window. Uh, to me, to see that I'm level and that I'm getting, that I'm even, is I start with my mirrors. And I'm going to show you a series of three side-by-side -side mirrors showing the driver's side on the left and the passenger side on the right. And my goal is that it look even on both sides. I don't want to see more of the trailer on one side than the other. And if I keep that in mind as I'm backing, I will be backing lined up so that the ball and the tongue will match. So this first series of pictures, you can see that the passenger side, I can see more of the passenger side door. And I don't want to do that. So I've corrected. And now the second set, you can see those are even. Then as I back up, I have found a focal point and on this trailer it's going to be the rock guard and my goal as I'm backing is to keep that rock guard even on each side and if I make sure that I have the same amount of rock guard showing on each side as I back I once again I'm going to be backing centered on the RV once I get to where I'm just a few feet away we have these we got these two balls that are on these telescoping um, extendable poles here. Uh, they're like radio antennas used to be. And they have heavy duty magnets on the bottom. And they're actually made to line up uh, travel trailers, etc. And when we had the truck, I used them some, but I still use this method of centering on the trailer as I was backing but now I use this to measure the ball height and make sure that the ball height will fit under the tongue of the trailer so you may need to jack the front end of the trailer before you start backing in and once again as I'm backing in I keep the distance between on both sides of the uh, in the mirrors even and then I use one of these on the ball so that I can tell when I get close enough it will just tap that over and once I know that it's tapped off I can see that in my backup mirror I mean in my uh, rear view camera then I know I'm I'm basically there it's gonna take probably a couple of times because I don't want to go too far and I will just keep backing until I am lined up underneath the tongue of the trailer then You'll notice as I lower the trailer onto the ball, you have to open up the um, lever on front of the tongue. But as I lower the trailer, you notice that the back end of the van is also lowering. Then I'm going to have to lock that tongue onto the ball. Now you'll notice it didn't lock exactly. And this happens occasionally. I'm just a little bit too far back because I kept inching back. I am going to barely, I'm going to put the van in gear, barely let off the brake so that it comes forward just a tad. Then I'm going to be able to lock the tongue onto the ball. Now, I am now going to raise the front end of the trailer and this is going to do two things one is it's going to show me if the van's raising with it then it is the ball is locked onto the trailer they're secure and then it's also going to make it where there's not as much pressure whenever I am putting on the anti-sway weight distribution bars and on the blue ox it is just the one piece with the chains and what we're going to do here is I'm going to snap the front end. There's a little, you can see the little hole there. I'm going to snap that into place uh, on the part that is uh, in the van. It snaps into the front end there. And then I am going to be counting, 
chain links to see how many chain links I uh, used to lock it onto the uh, lever and back. We have found that 10 works great for us. And essentially the more links you have, the tighter the the more the anti sway is going to work. Ours works great with 10, but it will be different for each person. But once I lock that in place, I always double check to make sure that it is actually locked. And then I repeat the process on the other side. As I am lowering the front end of the trailer, you're going to notice that that bar is going to start to bow. And the bowing of that bar means that the pressure is now being placed equally across. It's distributing the weight and it's also going to be anti-sway. What you want to also notice here is that ours is adjusted properly so that the back end of the van is not down, the front end of the trailer is not down, or it's not at an apex. This is, it's, it's level there. And so once I have finished that, we make sure that it's locked on there. Um, we now are going to hook the chains in and the uh, breakaway cable does need to be attached separately than the chains. And that is an important thing and it's required by most states and you'll notice that the chains are crossed so that should something happen and for some unforeseen reason the ball comes loose then the chains will catch the trailer. Um, breakaway cable once again should the trailer get loose that automatically pulls a pin and it will stop the trailer. So important safety equipment but the seven-way plug, you'll notice there's really only one way to plug that in. Uh, secure it, make sure it's good and tight, and then always physically check to see that the lights are working. Because you certainly don't want to get down the road and find out you've been driving and your lights have not been working. Uh, unhitching is essentially reversing the process. Uh, you get there, you want to make sure that you are level left to right, that you've chalked your tires, and then you're ready to start the process of raising the front end of the trailer. You'll notice it also raises the back end of the van. And this is when you want to loosen the tension on those. You want to take off your anti-sway bars, those weight distribution bars. But the reason you've raised it is to take that pressure off so that you're not just uh, all, taking it off while it's under extreme pressure. Uh, once the ch once those bars are off, you then can lower the front end. And I'm sorry that the video I got lost <laughs> lost part of this video, but you lower the front end, you unlock it, uh, release the ball, and then you can raise the front end of the trailer. Now I do want to say something about. Uh, when we release the pressure on those chains, there have been just a couple of times, we've towed a lot with this, there have been just a couple of times where the chain had gotten kind of uh, twisted somehow, part of that chain had gotten twisted, and it did not release. It was, I kept turning, and it kept turning the chain with the, uh, with the, the lever that was supposed to release it. What I did is I locked it back, made sure it was locked back, then just got a little bit of WD-40 and squirted it in there. And then it didn't take long. I mean, just basically squirted it in there, let it work through for a second, then released it. And both times that I've done that, it has popped out. The chain is released with no problem. Um, then unhitch both sides, take the bars out, stow those away, um, lower the trailer so that the the weight is basically on the back of the van then I raise it just a hair I unlock it from the the ball from the tongue 
and if that doesn't unlock once again you may need to nudge your tow vehicle forward or backwards depending on which way you just had it then you can raise the tongue off of the ball and pull away your tow vehicle we absolutely love the blue ox hitch uh, the anti-sway the weight distribution it tows well I mean we have towed in some heavy-duty winds and some of the strongest we uh, were out at Ray Roberts when we were coming back across a viaduct across a dam and it was in February there was a strong north wind just coming off of a lake so you can imagine the trailer just towed right behind us and so we are very pleased with the hitch it's working well for us and these are the steps that I take to hitch and unhitch and if you have any suggestions of things that I haven't thought of please feel free to leave us comments I'm always looking for new and improved ways to do things thanks for watching two tired teachers